بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم ما بعد The night is an opportunity to get a connection in a taluk with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so that one bridges the gap between him and his khalik, his creator. Although it's an opportunity to rest, but it's also an opportunity to get that nur from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malana Amr Padam Puri rahmatullah you say, that our work is in the day to speak to the people in lakfin nahari saban tawila inviting mankind to allah so in the day you are the creation and in the night qumil layl illa qalila with the creator you should say the night time is an opportunity to draw hidayat for the self for yourself and for mankind and the day is the time and opportunity to distribute this hidayat which you've got from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So taking at night and distributing in the day. Miyaji Mihrab used to say that the era of the people who cry in the darkness of the night has end or bolne walo ke zamana shuru And the time, the era where people just speak and give bayans and lectures that era has started in the era of getting up in the darkness of the night and crying in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that era has ended those people are gone now people only concentrate on bayans and lectures and that's what deen has come about but we don't see the people in the darkness of the night the Khadim, the uh, assistant of Hazrat Jimana in Amal Asnafullah, you say, I can remember him when he used to get up in the darkness of the night. Then he used to cry like a baby, he used to wail, he used to knock his hands on the ground and he used to say, one and a half to two and a half hours he used to spend just in dua. That's not the tahajjud and the ibadah. Just in dua, crying to Allah, begging and beseeching Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for hidayat and these were Rijal, the men of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who were renowned for their taqwa and piety and sacrifices yet they never rested we should think how renowned and how much sacrifice we have made for the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and how much Relax and comfortable we are. Hassan Basri used to say, when he was asked, Ma that those people who strive in ibadah, what's their condition? Because their faces are glowing. So he replied, Innahum rahmani ta'ala falbasahum nuran min nurihi that they have secluded themselves from Allah. It's only them and their Allah. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had clothed them from His Noor. Allah had taken out Noor from His Noor. And that's why you see the Ahlullah, that people want to see. You get a, a ecstasy, a pleasure when you're sitting in the company of the pious and the friends of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because they are an epitome of the nur of Allah. So according to the fuqaha, Imam Malik, Shafi'i, Ahmad, Abu Yusuf, Muhammad, and Jamhur Ulama, amongst them as well, Hassan Basri, Sayyid ibn Jubair, Ikrama, Muhammad ibn Sirin, Ibrahim Nakhai, they have the opinion that it's more virtuous in the nawafil of the night to make salam on every two rakats. Imam Munif is of the opinion that you should read four rakats at night. And he was of the opinion that you can read two, four, six or eight rakats of tahajjud. After tahajjud, if a person has yaqeen, he will get up, then he will read his three and two after those eight rakats. Otherwise, a person can read in after Isha and then do the eight rakats of Tahajjud. 
and uh, the nawafil in the day is four rakat. So Imam Abu Hanifa and his two students, Abu Yusuf and Muhammad, rahimahumullah, were of the opinion that the rakat in the day is four four. So if a person reads his ishraq, preferably he should make one salam in the four rakats. And then if he reads his chast after that, then in four four rakats, rather than two. Whereas Imam Malik, Imam Shafi'i, Imam Ahmed bin Hanbal rahimahumullah were of the opinion that the nawafil in the day also should be two two rakats. If a person is not reading tahajjud salat and they don't get tawfiq to wake up, then Hazrat Hassan Basri used to say, Inna rajul, that a person commits a sin, فَيُحْرَمْ بِهِ قِيَامَ الْلَيْلِ Then this person will be deprived of getting up at night. So the cause of not doing good deeds, the harm, the repercussions of sin is a person becomes mahroom. Fudail bin Ayaz used to say, إِذَا لَمْ تَقْدِرْ عَلَىٰ قِيَامِ اللَّيْلِ وَسِيَامِ النَّهَارِ فَعْلَمْ أَنَّكَ مَحْرُومٌ That if you don't have the opportunity to fast in the day and get up at night, then remember you are amongst those who have been deprived of all goodness. وَقَدْ كَثُرَتْ خَطِيئَتُكْ And the cause of that is that your sins have increased the errors and your ma'asiyat and your disobedience was a cause for you being deprived of good actions. So a person should check all the time that it should not be that through my actions I am deprived of goodness and good deeds. Relates. We were traveling once out in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the jama'at, in the contingent was Silm bin Ashim. And it was night time and we laid camp. And I said, I'm going to see how his ibadat is. So when everybody went to sleep, he got up. And he went to make wudu and he started reading salah. As he was in salah, وَجَاءَ أَسَدٌ حَتَّى دَنَا مِنْهُ A lion came close to him. As I seen the lion, I looked for a tree and I climbed up a tree. But he never moved and he continued his salah as normal حَتَّى سَجَدَ Until he went into sajda. So I said and I thought that now it will be an opt opportunity for the lion to devour him. But he continued it normal and no, the lion did not do anything. Thumma sallam. He completed his salat. Then he addressed the lion. Ayyu sab utlubu risk min makanin akhir. O animal Seek your sustenance from another place. So the lion left and he said he, as he was leaving, the lion roared so much it could shake and tremble a mountain. And he continued his salat like normal till the time of Fajr. Then he started praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and invoking and he made this dua Allahumma inni as'aluka an tujirani minan nar Ya Allah I don't have any guts to ask you for Jannah because I am not worthy of Jannah but at least save me from the fire of Jahannam at least save me 
from the fire of Jahannam. And he said that I was so tired that entire night, he got up in the morning, he continued after that his wazaif, like nothing had happened. So these were the friends of Allah. When you make, make peace with Allah, the entire creation on earth will make peace with you. And when you declare war with Allah, then nothing on earth will save you. So we need to check our amal. Inni la lafu an qiyamil layl. Somebody complained to one sheikh that it's hard for me to get a foot to hajjud. For he said, Ya akhi la ta'asilla bin nahar. If you disobey Allah in the day, Allah will deprive you of the hajjud at night. Hassan bin Salih had a slave girl which he sold. When it was the darkness of the night, she got up to read salah. And she addressed the people of the house. Ya ahl al-dar, as-salah, as-salah. Oh people, get up for tahajjud. So the people replied that we're waiting for fajr. Is this fajr time? She said, no, no, no. Wa ma tusalluna illa al-maktuba. Do you people only read the first salat? They said, yes. So when she got an opportunity, she returned to Hassan and she told him, Ya Mawlai, Bi'tani min qawmin la yusalluna bil-layl. You send me to such a people, you've made me the slave of people who don't get up for tahajjud. Please take me back. Please take me back. I don't want the nuhusat and the repercussions of these people. Their company is bad. So he accepted her intercession and took her back. Rabbi Ibn Sulaiman says that I spent one night by Imam Shafi and his habit was فَلَمْ يَكُنْ يَنَامْ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ إِلَّا يَسِيرًا It was as if he would not sleep the night at all. If he had to rest, it was a very small portion of the night which he would get up and read Salat. Otherwise, he wouldn't even sleep. Somebody else said, I spent company with uh, Imam Abu Hanifa, six months. فَمَا فِيهَا لَيْلَ وَضَعَ جَنْبَهُ No night passed that I seen him sleeping at all. So they say it was the habit of Imam Hanifa that uh, he should spend most of the night in Ibadat. But one day, somebody said, this is a person who keeps the night alive the entire night. So he said that after that, his entire life, he spent the entire night awake and he used to read. Some narrations, 40 years, he read Isha and Fajr with the same wudu. He read Isha and Fajr with the same wudu. So, it was not just about the night, but if we look at how they spend the night and they, how they looked after their time, one can realize that they capitalize on the Akhirah. Ali ibn Abi Hassan exclaims that Yahya ibn Zakaria alayhi salam one night overslept because he ate a full stomach. So when he came down, Ya Yahya wajadta daran laka khayram min dari Have you found a house better than my house? Hal wajadta jiwaran khayram min jiwari have you found a neighbor better than being my neighbor? If you just had a glimpse of Jannatul Firdaus, your body would have melted. Your ruh would have left you out of shock for Jannatul Firdaus. So Jannah should be a sufficient motivation. 
وَلَوْ اِطَّلَعْتَ لَا جَهَنَّمَ And if you are privy of Jahannam, your body would have melted out of fear. And you would have cried so much, your tears would terminate. And then you would have cried, pus in blood. Azhar bin Mughir says, I seen in a dream a beautiful woman who did not resemble any of the women. Her beauty and her countenance was not close to the women of the world. So I said, Man anti. She said, I am amongst the whores of Jannah. So I said, Marry me. She said, Ukhtubni ila Sayyidi. Propose to my master. Propose to Allah. And pay the mahar. What was the mahar? She said, Tulut tahajjud. If you want a lot of whores in Jannah, read long, long rakats of tahajjud. She said about Ala bin Ziyad. Every night he used to make a khatam. One night he was very exhausted. So he told his wife, wake me up. So that night when he went to go sleep, he seen somebody in his dream. And uh, that person grabbed him by his head, on his hair. And he said, Qum ya Ziyad. Oh, Ibn Ziyad, get up. Fadhkur Rabbaka yadhkurk. Remember Allah, Allah will remember you. So he got up, shocked and bewildered. And it is said that those strands of hair that this person grabbed, Qiyaman ila an mata. From that day he woke up till he departed from this world, that he stood on end. It is said about the daughter of Rabi' bin Khuthayim, she used to tell her father, Ya Abati, ma li aranna sayyanamun wa araka la tanam. I see people sleep at night, you're the only one that's awake at night. So he replied, Ya Bnata, in Abaki Ya Khafunna. Your father fears Jahannam. If people had the reality, the Hakikat, and it had entered their hearts and they knew what was going to happen in Akhirat, they would not sleep at night. They would not sleep at night. Rabbi said, I went to observe always. And I seen him after Fajr Satin. And I said, let me see him. So he was involved in Tasbih. And he carried out in Dhikr. And he badat and tilawat at until Dhahr. And then he went for Dhahr Salat. Then he continued in his Ibadat till Asr. Then he went and continued until Maghrib Salat in tilawat and Dhikr. And he carried on like that till Isha. Then he carried on after Isha with his tilawat and ibadat in salah until Fajr. After he read his Fajr salat, I seen some slumber overcome him. And he said, Allahumma inni a'udhu bika min aynin nawama. O Allah, I seek refuge from those eyes that fall asleep. Ya Allah, protect me from eyes that fall into slumber وَمِن بَطْنٍ لَا تَشْبَعْ and from a stomach that doesn't get satisfied and satiated it wants more and more and more when I seen this of Uwais Qarni I said حَزْبِي هَذَا مِنْهُ this is sufficient for me to take lesson from the friends of Allah so the darkness of the night is an opportunity to draw from the khazanas of Allah. Let us not get to be from those who are mahroom. If a person cannot get up, at least before one's sleep, we should read. If a person cannot manage that also, then after Isha, may Allah give us tawfiq of making amal. Wa akhiru da'wana anilhamdulillahi rabbil alam.